All right, welcome. What's up, everybody, to another edition of Fireplace Friday. So we're still looking for theme songs, so let's try another one. Let's talk about fireplaces, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things fireplaces may bring. So let me know if you like that. We'll try that. We'll try another one next week. So what we're going to talk about this week, what is that smell? What is that smell? It smells like I, I, I live at Jack Stack in my house. I, it smells like a barbecue in my house. We get these calls all the time, especially this time of year as we start getting into the rainy season. So what happens is, is uh, it rains and the chimney soaks up all that water and it smells like a wet, damp dog in your house or a barbecue or what have you. So what what causes it and what are the solutions? So as with any problem in life, it's a process of elimination. If everybody had a magic solution to everything, the world would be a good, different place, but it doesn't work that way. So it's a process of elimination. Of course, we wanna start with the obvious and work our way down. So we have a nice uh, fireplace smell and solution sheet here that we, uh, that we share with our customers to give them, we do have a nice process to try to save them money and to try to get to the root of the problem right off the bat. So we're gonna talk about fireplace smells and solutions. Um, the overview, fireplaces can make your home smell like a barbecue. Uh, there are many reasons this could be happening. One, excessive creosote or a dirty chimney. Should have that chimney clean, right? Two, damper is not closed or it's broken. So if the damper is not closed in your throat or at the top, it could be allowing air to come down, rush down the chimney and it's bringing all those smells down with it, right? Uh, three, water entry and humidity. This is a big reason. I put that on there because that's typically the number one reason for most of these most of these problems. Number one and two are definitely kind of you know most obvious, but usually it's a con in combination with up to number three. It rains outside. People think that brick or a solid structure, unless they've been water treated, they're gonna they're they're like a sponge. They're like little miniature sponges. They just soak up everything. So you look at your chimney when it rains or throw some water on it and it soaks that water right up. It's just soaking it up like a sponge. So maybe you need a water barrier, kind of like the saver system stuff that we talked about that allows the brick to breathe, but it doesn't allow the water to enter, right? Okay, uh, number four, utility flue leaking wet flue gases into the chimney interior. A lot of people don't realize where my marker go. Here it is. Okay, so here's your, you get, you get my nice bad art today. Tyler's behind the camera today. He's our uh, operations manager. He's standing in for some of the girls. So, okay, so here's your chimney. And a lot of times you'll have your fireplace on the main floor right here. And then down in the basement, you'll have a breaching that goes through. And this is hooked up to your water heater, your furnace, et cetera, down in your basement, right? That's how your, uh, that's how your uh, house gets heated and your water gets heated. So we've got a flue lining for the fireplace that goes up, and then we usually have one for a utility flue or the furnace and water heater. What happens over time is just like with the fireplace, water gets in, things corrode over time, and every two foot there's a joint uh, in these flue tiles, and usually it was laid up with mortar. Well, mortar over time when ex uh, exposed to acids or water or what have you, usage, expansion, and contraction, eventually this mortar erodes. Then what happens there? Well, um, when you use your furnace, a furnace will create almost about a gallon of water an hour. A gallon of water an hour. That's a lot of water. So as it's being used, it's sending all this water and flue gases, carbon monoxide, all the bad stuff, up through the chimney and then it vents out the top. Well, if we start creating holes or gaps in these areas, which is something we look for when we come out on our inspections, what can happen is those flue gases are gonna leak. Now that's a problem because obviously a chimney is attached to your house. You don't want the potential of carbon monoxide and flue gases getting back to the home. But also, let's, uh, let's pretend that they aren't leaking back to the home. They're getting into the interior chase and it's causing a lot of water moisture. Sometimes it'll show up on your walls where you'll have wallpaper or paint peeling. Um, sometimes it doesn't show up, it just comes out in the, in, the, in the way of smells. So if that's happening and you have a utility, that's another thing you want to address is putting a new uh, properly sized stainless steel lining down, hooking it up to the appliances. That way they have a nice direct path out and we have a, 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 a material that won't corrode like the masonry has over the years. It did its job, now it's time to upgrade, right? Okay. 
Uh, number five, dead animal or leaves and debris on the smoke shelf. So that's another, that kind of always goes back to the chimney cleaning. But of course, when we do a chimney cleaning, we're cleaning creosote and soot, not dead animals. So there is a little bit extra charge, but let me, let, let me tell you this, it's not something you want to do yourself. It's pretty gross. So the extra charge is basically for the gag factor and also the extra time it takes and then all the disposal stuff we got to do and then we're going to disinfect and all that other stuff. So remember, chimney cleaning, if you call here for a chimney cleaning and you suspect that you have an animal, make sure you let us know because then it is an awkward conversation when we get there about it and uh, we come out with the right equipment, right? Okay, but that can cause smells, you know, dead things rotting, you know, whether it be leaves, and foliage or whether it be an animal, dead things rotting smell. So you get that smell back in the house. And then um, number six, air being drawn down the chimney by the house or wind. Now remember what we talked about with this, if it's wind, we can do a special wind cap that causes the updraft. Um, if it's the house being drawn down, then usually that's called negative pressure in the house. And usually it's um, because the house is so tight so a lot of times the house needs some makeup air from the outside because obviously a tight house isn't a healthy house. You don't want stagnant air and rebreathing all the nasty uh, stuff that uh, goes through your heating and cooling system. So yeah, that, that can usually be solved with outside air or maybe an, uh, a heat recovery, recovery ventilator that a heating and cooling company can install, et cetera. So that's usually at the, at the very end there. Now it can be a combination of all this stuff, but usually it's uh, several of these items. Now. How do we solve these? Okay, again, process of elimination. So we'll start at the top, the most obvious stuff, when we come out to do the inspection and see what's going on. Then we'll kind of give you a game plan. Okay, let's start here and then go here and then go here, etc. So common steps to resolve fireplace smells. Number one, clean chimney and inspect. There you go. We gotta, we gotta clean it. We can't inspect a dirty chimney. And that'll also get some of that acidic creosote out of there, get some of the smell, uh, that stuff that's causing the smell out of there, right? Repair all areas where water can enter, broken crown, brickwork, flashing, etc. Now remember, the crown is this top area up here, and it's kind of like your driveway, it cracks and then it allows water in. So whether we got to replace it or we put a sealant over the top, um, we just got to see how bad it is. And then waterproofing, spraying this stuff, remember this stuff, on the outside of the chimney. Also, a lot of uh, chimneys have flashings above the roof line, and the flashing could be leaking because a lot of times when the roofer puts it on, they don't cut it in. So the flashing can't move independently with the chimney, so it breaks the seal right here. And uh, so obviously fixing that, keeping the water out. Okay, moving on. Um, install a top damper. That's another good one. So if there's no air coming down through there, if we install a damper cap at the top, and then basically it's got a plate in here, it's got a cord that comes all the way down to a bracket in the firebox. When you pull down on it, it works like a spring, pop, it closes, and then it seals the top like a mason's jar, so it doesn't allow that air to go down through it. You release the cord at the bottom, poop, it pops up, and that's how they work. We'll do a video later on about top dampers and how they work and maybe chimney caps. So. Moving on, uh, five, repair holes and gaps in smoke chamber and flue lining of the offending fireplace. So, hey, I smell all this stuff on the main floor. Maybe there's another fireplace in the basement and um, maybe I'm getting crossover. Maybe I'm getting crossover smells or et cetera. So you wanna make sure your smoke chamber area and your flue lining area is free of those gaps and voids and problems where you can get air movement around through there, right? right. Alrighty, um, number six, repair and replace, reline the utility flue lining. We just went over that. So like I said, sometimes we have to break out the existing tile, but the big thing about utility flue linings is twofold. One, you wanna use a quality liner, which is not typically an aluminum liner, like a lot of heating and cooling companies install. You wanna use a all fuel stainless steel liner that won't corrode over time because you don't wanna to have to pay for this more, more, more than once, right? Right. And then the other one is proper sizing. So a lot of companies will only just put, hey, this, it'll, this, this, this size will only fit. Well, that's not how it works. You have to make sure that the liner has enough capacity to accommodate the appliances hooked to it. And there's a little equation, I won't bore you with all the numbers and everything, but that's why you got us. We're the pros, we know how to size that, and we wanna make sure a right size liner gets down it. Because if you just put down the, whatever will fit down the hole, it might not be big enough, and it's just like trying to pour a gallon of water into a half gallon glass, it's gonna spill. And spilling carbon monoxide and flue gases into a home is not a good thing, not a good thing. So, 
Moving on, number seven, contact an HVAC company to install a whole house ventilator if problem persists after the above steps are taken to battle. So basically a whole house ventilator, a lot of houses are extremely tight, just like your house here. Everything's sealed up, everybody puts in new windows, new insulation, it seals this thing up like a bubble. So basically what happens, and you need to add more air to it because you've sealed up every little gap. I always tell people it's kind of like the old Bugs Bunny cartoons where Bugs Bunny is in a submarine. Water starts coming out here, he puts his finger there. And then water start, starts coming out over here, he puts his finger there. And then it comes out over there, put, put his foot there. You know, so if you, don't, if you plug up all your, all your holes where all that air is getting in, it's because the house is going, I need to breathe, let more air in. Well, you need to bring the air in, obviously, where it's more uh, tempered, convenient, what have you for you, because if it's coming in right by your head and you're trying to sleep and you're getting all this cold air in, that's not cool. Or you're trying to watch TV and the fireplace is bringing in a bunch of cold air. That's not fun. You want it to come in in an area of the house that it can be tempered and then thrown back out into the house as makeup air for the house. So it balances the house and it's a healthier, cleaner environment for you and your family. So, all right, so, um, Let's see here, and then uh, I always make a note at the bottom, fireplace odor issues are a process of elimination, just like everything else in life. Uh, to resolve, we suggest the above steps, uh, one or multiple at a time, to eliminate the issues that cause these problems. Uh, the repairs we complete are not a guarantee, rather they are addressing the most obvious chimney problems that can be causing the problem. Usually we don't make it to too many more steps out, because we're obviously, when we come out to evaluate, uh, do the cleaning, what have you, and we're doing that initial consultation with you, we are obviously pointing out the most obvious stuff. Usually it's the most obvious stuff, but you sometimes have those problems where you go, oh, well, it must be a combination. So again, process of elimination, we're here to help. We're, we're with you on all this. We want to get all your chimney smells resolved. So if you have chimney smells or anything, give us a call here at Flues Brothers, 913-236-7141. That wraps up this Fireplace Friday edition. We'll see you next Friday. Have a great week.